you folks tell me? How can a known poison that exists in our food supply or medications and sometimes even in the air you breathe be totally overlooked as the cause of disease in America? Watch me now and soon you too will know the cause. Wow, that was a long time. Was that a week ago? A week ago or maybe uh, six days ago. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, folks, you need to know something. I thought a lot the last 10 days. Have a good one. I thought a lot the last 10 days about my occupation, my job. <clears throat> At my age, I should have hung it up. John and I talk about this often. He is 74. I'm 72. Uh, and Damon's just a kid. I mean, the three of us are here right now. These uh, three elderly gentlemen, with the exception of Damon, two elderly gentlemen, doing this work. And everyone, I mean, my attorney called me and said, Doug, the corporate attorney, I, I, I'm winding it down. I'm thinking of uh, retiring. Where, what are your thoughts? You know, um, This isn't a job. <clears throat> this is a passion. This is something that 50 years ago, when I got back in Vietnam, I began, I came back weird. <laughs> I worked with Dr. Hughes at USC, and I remember, I don't know, 72 or 73, I got on an elevator to go up to the ninth floor at USC Medical School, ninth floor, to meet him and his secretary and talk about some things. We were doing a, a collaborative research paper on food allergy. <clears throat> and uh, I'll never forget, he was an older guy. He was probably 72. You know, life, a snap of finger and it's gone. Uh, and he was telling me how much he still enjoyed working. And I thought, man, this is absolutely amazing. I hope one day I'll be that guy that still enjoys working. Well, this all came to a head years ago when uh, a PhD, a psychologist, uh, a Christian uh, doctor met with me on the air and began teaching me about Leviticus, fungus, about all the yeast and the negative connotations biblically to yeast, fungus, and so forth. And then I did my own homework. I got a Theopedia, do you know what that is, from a few years ago, opened it up, and I, I looked at leavening, yeast, mildew, like in Leviticus, mildew. And, uh, <clears throat> and it said that mildew and leavening and yeast and fungus was analogous to sin. And I'm thinking, that's probably ridiculous. I, how could the Theopedia be so wrong? That was maybe 20, 25 years ago. Today, get this, from my daughter-in-law and my son, I get a one-year Bible. I listen to a guy I love. His name is Tom Dooley. He died of brain cancer years ago. But when I used to jog every morning, I'd do my three or four-mile loop. Tom was on the radio at 5 a.m., and I would listen to him and do my jog. And, and uh, when he passed, I talked to his wife. She sold me his remaining podcasts of the One Year Bible. So at night, before I go to bed, I plug it in my ear and listen to it. So I'm reading this the other day, and you know how early I am the year. It's a brand new year. Happy New Year, by the way. Genesis 1.11, and then God said, that Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on their land with, uh, that bear fruit with seed in it according to their like kind. And it was so. The land and uh, produce vegetation, plant bearing seeds according to their own kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. I'm thinking genetically modified seeds to make genetically modified foods. If anything, the food production companies and the Food and Drug Administration have said, like you'd believe Genesis 1 11. Come on, Doug. Um, and I'm, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm really getting it. How are we supposed to eat? And God thought it was good. And then, uh, eat, you, uh, this is yours for food. Later, it goes on to say, I give you every green plant that is yours for food. And later than that, I give you everything. You know, you can, uh, there are certain rules, but I give you uh, animals to eat and so forth. Folks, this, this to me really opened my eyes, and that's where I want to go today. <clears throat> I did a lecture five years ago to the Academy of Complementary and Integrative Medicine. And I thought it was going to take me, I told Dr. Cowden, a cardiologist friend of mine who headed that up, that it was probably going to take me a few months. And he said, well, get writing. It's continuing medical education for these doctors. And he named some of the names. I mean, 
big names you would know today, guys that have big blogs and big newsletters and so forth. I not only got to MC it, I was the master of ceremony, I got to introduce all these doctors, but I gave two lectures. One of them was on uh, phytonutrition. My lecture was called Brain Hacking. Uh, does fungus hack your brain? Okay, and I was talking about cancer in one of these lectures and I found this. <clears throat> I told my wife, what I'm going to do is prove that plants and or oils from plants, talk about eugenol from clove, you know, this is all what we talk about, carvacol and so forth, <clears throat> that plants, plant extracts, phytonutrients, oils, etc., kill cancer. That's the point I tried to make in this. But I wanted this to go further, given the clout of the guys I was talking to. Dietrich Klinghart from Germany was there, an amazing man. Uh, and so I really wanted to blow their minds. So I wanted to talk not only about cancer, but how many of these phytonutrients then were antifungal. And I got to tell you, this is amazing. I pulled in one Sunday afternoon, I pulled 12 randomly chosen phytochemicals. Uh, and, and here they are. Ficetin, resveratrol, curcumin, proanthocyanidin, silmarin, genistine, camphocyanin, uh, sulforaphane, indole-3-carbonyl, capsaicin, luteolin, and D-limonene. Those I knew. I had studied those through the years. I, I knew genistine, you know, uh, soy, and so forth. Easy stuff. So I just pulled these, and I started looking up. Here are the most common men and women cancer, adult men and women cancers. Women breast, lung, and colorectal. Men prostate, lung, and colorectal. So I had to be specific in this lecture. I had to know that um, not only could this help with, uh, you know, dermatophytes and malazia on the skin, little skin cancers, but the big boys, the big three, breast, prostate, lung, and, and colorectal, the big four, <clears throat> these plant nutrients were referenced in the scientific literature as either inducing apoptosis, <clears throat> I, I'm trying to impress you now, bursting cancer cells apart, or inhibiting angiogenesis. Uh, cancer metastasizes through a process called angiogenesis. Two breast cancer cells break away from a breast, go up to the brain, become four, become eight, become 16, 32, 64, boom. But the only way that happens is if a new plexus of capillaries forms around them because they gain food in those blood supplies. And this is called a process of angiogenesis. So could these randomly selected, you know, sulforaphan, uh, could that inhibit angiogenesis or could it inhibit a pathway through which cancer travels? My work was cut out for me. You, you know, I was looking at months. How would I find 12 of these that would not only inhibit a pathway or stop the process, metastasis process, of lung, breast, prostate, and colorectal cancer, but how many of them would also kill fungus? Thank you. Two hours later, here's what I got. Every one of these, every one of these inhibited a pathway or uh, induced apoptosis. It killed cancer cells, colorectal, breast, prostate, and lung cancers. My chosen 12. Could I have chosen 50? 650? You bet I could. I said 12. You can, cap to, you can capture a physician audience by doing quick graphics and then looking at them and talking to them. I've enjoyed all of my years of, of lecturing to doctors. 12, they would know what resveratrol is. It's the purple and grape, right? They would know what some of these things are. But these things, see, I thought I'd have to go through 200 of them. These things had to not only inhibit those four cancers, breast, prostate, lung, and colorectal. They had to inhibit one or more of those, preferably all of them. And they had to kill fungus. Boom, 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 boom. Every one of them. And it wasn't, you know, I didn't type in Ficetin, uh, lung cancer, and say, okay, that's cool. I went on, prostate cancer. 
colorectal cancer, breast cancer. It was unreal. It was like divine. The research papers just popped up left and right. So I, here's where I want to go today. We have known this for decades if, let me go back, father of medicine 3,000 years ago, Hippocrates, let food be your medicine and medicine become your food. Can you eat wellness? Living proof. You can. Uh, and many, many others over the holidays are living proof you can't. You enjoyed great health until the you know, ghosts and little guys came to your door on Halloween. And then it's just been consistent sugar binge and so forth. And I personally am glad we have those times. Oh, what can a little sugar hurt? Uh, John just said to me something interesting with all of the technical guys back here before they went home. Um, he said, you know, um, sugar to most of us must be like heroin to a drug addict. And I think he's right. I think, I think if it's there, you're going to do it, right? Um, and sugar is all over. Sugar is all over. Specifically, what I wanted to do is point you to a couple of books. I just found this on, was it eBay? Uh, this is Prescription for Natural Cures. This is written by my friend Dr. Mark Stengler out in San Diego. Uh, and it is about as good a reference. He starts with acne. You know, Z is probably zits. You know, A, B, C, D. Um, he starts with that and goes all the way through all these symptoms. This is a powerhouse of a book. He gave it to me because he was a a guest of mine on TV. I don't know what it costs. Oh, here it is. Uh, so $25. I just found it on uh, either Amazon or, or uh, eBay for $7, a new book. <clears throat> this would be a very good reference to you to have uh, because several times in here he uses the F word, fungus. He talks about in acne, acne, you know, different kinds of acne some of them being linked to microbes, fungus. And throughout this book, he talked about that. That's why I put them on TV. Then there's a book I've showed you through the years. If you haven't seen it, John, do you have the camera on, camera A on there? Yeah. Plant-derived antimycotics, current trends uh, and future prospects. Folks, antifungals, I'm telling you, when I started this live venue a few years ago, fungus was unknown. Then the, uh, the uh, Center for Disease Control here in the U.S. began expounding on it. Think fungus. Tell your doctor. I couldn't believe how bold the Center for Disease Control was. Your doctor isn't going to know about it, so you need to tell him. That's when I was bold enough to write that thing on my website. All of you have access to it. It's free. Copy two pages. Take it to your doctor. It references not only the Center for Disease Control, but other websites that say fungus is a big deal. If you're not getting better, seeing your doctor think fungus. And I always, you know, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a doctor about fungus, he can help all the patients behind you. He doesn't know that. He just thinks because your ear rang and an antifungal program got it better, only ear ringing that comes into my office will I treat this way. I'll never forget, I'll never forget Dr. David Weekly's face and his heart showed right through his face that day. Um, he became emotional when he, he called me into his office, and I thought he was upset with me, <clears throat> yeah, it was the end of the day, maybe 5 o'clock, and he said, what are you doing here? I said, okay, you asked me to sign a five-year agreement to leave my home in Los Angeles and relocate here for five years and to grow your clinic by understanding the cause of many of their skin conditions. He's a big Johns Hopkins dermatologist, well-known, well-liked guy. And he said, look at this. And he gives me a chart. I forget her name. Uh, but she had uh, uh, a type of skin cancer. As a matter of fact, that's thrown away. New rules. If you have a boom boom in your body, you reach into your right if you're right-handed, left if you're left-handed pocket, big starched pocket, and you get a pen out and you scribble a drug. What if they have six symptoms? Then you scribble six drugs. This is medicine today. And I just want to tell you as we go into this craziest time on earth, as long as we've been here, I'm sure there are crazier times, 
as we go into this where more and more we're being plumbed with science in our brains, that word, ugh, um, and things are changing very rapidly. The onus is no longer on your doctor via telemed or any other, you know, any other doctor visit. The onus is no longer on your doctor. The onus is on you guys to figure out why that happened. And you start with when did it happen. And then you look at things like this, plant-derived antimycotics. You know the two biggest ones they talk about in here? Eczema, okay. Uh, apply a mixture of the plant with olive oil on the infected skin, flavones, saponins. Uh, here he has, uh, I just, I read this so many years ago and just couldn't quit reading it. Deadly Nightshade, he talks about lime, topical lime, and he talks about garlic, and here's onions. Apply a boiling mixture of the plant. Th this is a couple of physicians that wrote this book. I bought this, I think I paid $125 for this many years ago. Because of the title, when David Weekly died, I no longer had a doctor to lean on. I know it sounds crazy, but no matter what those patients came in to see him for, if he couldn't fix it quickly with a cortisone shot, a PUVA box, a, a cortisone topic or oral, um, then he'd introduce him to me. And after a few months, he began trusting me. So more of the patients came to me. When I saw the title, many people wouldn't know what that is, plant-derived antimycotics. Myco is fungus, antifungal. Plant-derived onion? And garlic? Just as during the holiday you said, what can a little glass of wine hurt me? <clears throat> but you didn't stop there. You can't stop there. Once you get it in your body, John's right, it's heroin. You need a little, oh, it didn't hurt me last night, and I opened the bottle, I don't want to throw it away, it was $12. I'm going to have another glass of wine. What can a bite of chocolate hurt? Look, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. I don't have to be sharp. I don't have to be on the air, et cetera. What can a little bit hurt me? And that's the same, uh, that's the same thing, folks, that goes on with these uh, mycotoxins inside your body. A little bit isn't going to hurt. An antibiotic here and there, it can save your life. It's long-term use. You don't, you don't understand yet because your doctor has no idea. I'm not beating on doctors, believe me. I talked to a couple of them today. I have friends that are great doctors and uh, um, they're doing as best they can. They raised their hand, guys. We didn't do this. We graduated from elementary, high school, college. Nobody raised their hand and took an oath. They make them take an oath. And you wonder who wrote that oath, the Hippocratic Oath. I will use dietetic measures whenever possible, for the benefit of my patients. It's said in the 1900s. That's been changed. That is exited. I will neither use abortive remedies nor offer a woman an abortive remedy. That's all gone, out of the most common. Um, the updated, 1986, I think it was, they updated the Hippocratic Oath. It's diametric. The old Hippocratic Oath was pure and honest and so real I couldn't believe it. I will neither use deadly drug nor recommend it to patient. Gone. So who would have written that? But the Hippocratic Oath is still something doctors raise their right hand. And it says, I will follow the guidelines of those who taught me. Darn it, you raised your right hand. I, like a president does when he goes into office. That's what they make doctors do. You swear that you're going to do everything those pharmacies taught you to do. Right, Doc? Keep it up there. Right, Doc? They're good people. Do you know what resocialization is? I used to call it brainwashing. Boot camp resocialized me. I was a punk 18-year-old kid. Um, you know, go out with my friends and do crazy things. And all of a sudden, after, I don't know how long it was, a couple of months of boot camp, you're knocked into shape couple of years of medical training, they're knocked into shape. They're going to call you a quack if you mention this book. And it's gone deeper than that now, hasn't it? If you mention onions and garlic and allison and soybeans and things of that sort, they're going to call you a quack because the whole team that raised their right hand better be on the same page. I read something the other day 
that 27% of licensed healthcare practitioners in America have not taken a COVID vaccine. So I did the numbers. I got online. How many licensed healthcare practitioners are in the USA? 22, uh, 22,000. It's got to be more than that. There's got to be 20. No, there's 5,000, 7,000 doctors. 22,000. And I did the math times 27%. I end up with 6,000 or 7,000 doctors and nurses didn't get this. My point is, this isn't to tell you don't get it. What do they know? After years of seeing sick patients, what do they know? Why wouldn't they be first in line to get it? We'll discuss that tomorrow. We're going to go in depth a little bit on uh, what's going on, not politically, but medically. I need you to understand a lot of things. My doctor won't prescribe antifungals. I've heard this almost every day on this show. I hope you better understand now <clears throat> your doctor didn't learn. Your doctor learned antifungals for vaginal yeast, AIDS, and malazia infections, dermatophytes, skin, seborrheic dermatitis, which is caused by a fungus. But to think it's in your gallbladder mimicking cancer or in your lungs, well documented. In your lungs, it grows in a ball and it mimics uh, a, a cancer in your lungs, well, well documented. Um, and yet your doctor didn't learn that. That was part of what was left out. You got a ball in your lung, you got cancer. Look at the x-ray, okay? I reference a 2013 study done in the journal Lung. You can look this up online. <clears throat> I wish I had the volume. I think it was 27 lung cancer, either primary or secondary. It, it's, it's either they were diagnosed with lung cancer or they were diagnosed with liver cancer and through the blood it disseminated to the lungs. So uh, initial diagnosis or metastasis cancer. 27 of them uh, in this study. And they did further testing. Obviously, someone went into that hospital with a mycology background and said, I want to test all of these biopsies for fungus. And they did. This almost a decade ago. Uh, all 27 were begun on antifungals, and all 27 did well. Yet, a week ago, they all had lung cancer, chemotherapy, radiation. They're all going to die. If we're not thinking fungus, and we're not reading the right books, um, we got problems. Science is not static. Science evolves over years and years, period of time. And you know where it's all going? If I can be so bold, it's all going back to the beginning. I give you every green plant for food. This wasn't just for nourishment, folks. This was medicine. This was medicine with seed of like kind. So what do we do in the U.S.? We get our FDA to approve seed of wrong kind. Oh, don't worry. It won't hurt them. Okay. Okay, now, my doctor won't prescribe antifungals anti to me. I hear this all the time. Here's what I want you to know. I don't ever want you to go around your doctor and do something that your doctor says no because he knows your medical history. He knows your boom booms. He knows everything about you. I don't. If, if I were a patient and I had a something growing in my ear and I couldn't fix it, but if I put a Q-tip in there and jiggled it, oh, it felt so well. And the doctor had had me on antibiotics now for three months, and yet it was getting worse and worse. Even the Center for Disease Control says, tell your doctor it's not a bacterial problem. Think fungus. They were bold to say that. They confirmed my work, my 50 years of work, okay? So here's what I want you to do. When the doctor says, nope, no Diflucan, nope, no Sporinox, uh, nope, no Posiconazole, a newer azole drug, antifungal drug, ask your doctor if it's okay if you would begin a special diet. Now, he may or may not know about the ketogenic diet. Again, nutrition is something that is poorly taught <clears throat> during important medical training. If if you could try a diet and some supplements that you're going to spend 50 bucks for. I want to read you this. John, this is one of them I'm doing tomorrow. So I'm giving this group a two-month launch before I do this on television. I wrote this uh, last week. Plant extract extracts and oils against candida albicans. 
Candida is a common yeast or fungus which colonizes and infects many human tissues. While candida can often be treated successfully with azole drugs like fluconazole or diflucan, many candida strains are developing resistance to many of the azole drugs. Many plant extracts and oils have significant antifungal activity and can be used to treat candida orally or topically. A 2021 paper, this came out weeks ago, reported that at least 60 published studies reported certain plant preparations reduce candida biofilms. Uh, folks, a biofilm is, a, you know what fascia is? Holds all your organs. A, um, a biofilm is a sandwich bag, you know, that can grow over your organs. So your liver drops into a biofilm. And boy, killing that thing to get in and treat the liver becomes very difficult. Um, this paper was uh, Biofilms Formed by Candida Species, Journal of Fungi in Switzerland. A 2020 paper reported at least 60 published studies reported that certain plant preparations reduce candida, uh, it'd probably be candida albicans, mostly biofilm growth by at least 50%. Then do we need drugs? The plant preparations include 29 essential oils. For those of you who sell essential oils, God bless you. I never fully understood them, but as I told Kyle Drew one day, hey, if it kills fungus, I'm all for it. And 16 plant extracts total 34 plant species. Uh, plant species with anti-candida anti activity were predominantly from the following families. You got a pen or you can watch this later. The mint family, peppermint, powerfully. Not the chocolate, not the suckers, uh, the plant, the leaves, the mint. Myrtle, aster or composite, get this one, bean or legume, bean or legume. And finally, carrot, valcarinol. We talk about this all the time. Plants with the highest anti-candida activity included lavender, savory, Blue mint. Good antifungal activity was also found in wormwood. Wormwood kills worms. Fungus is a parasite. Henna and thyme, T H Y M E. That was again 2021, so I dropped back a dozen years. Short chain fatty acid, caprylic acid found in coconut oil, also has significant. This one has been reported for decades. Sodium caprylate, uh, lauric acid, uh, caprylic acid, C-A-P-R-Y-L-I-C. Caprylic acid, NSC is caprylic acid. It's the one I take. Um, a Korean in vitro study. I underline that on TV, John, for this reason. The audience needs to know the difference between an in vivo test and an in vitro test. In vitro tests are done in test tubes. In vivo means you gave the patient this and physiologically followed it through their body and said, wow, it killed cancer cells. A Korean in vitro study in test tubes reported that a combination candida treatment with caprylic acid along with carvacrol, thyme, oregano, cinnamon, carvacrol, or thymol from thyme, the oil from thyme, reduced candida concentrations by more than a million fold, together with caprylic acid, along with carvacrol, and look it up, C-A-V-C-A-R-V-A-C-R-O-L, carvacrol, or thymol, T-H-Y-M-O-L. Those two mixed together, either thymol, carvacrol, and caprylic acid, that's the big one, uh, reduce candida concentrations by more than a million fold. Treatment with only one of these offered a fourfold reduction in candida concentrations. When you're, you're bringing out a BB gun to kill an elephant, when you're using one uh, thing to try and kill candida, number one, it's the smartest, it being yeast or fungus, the smartest organism known to man. Okay, It will outsmart your uric, a your, uh, uric acid your undesalinic acid, your neem, your, you know, whatever antifungal you're using. So rotate them and hit big. And that's what this is saying. Antifungal activity of selected essential oils. Uh, cinnamaldehyde, 
and Carvacrol against Malazia furfur, that's a skin fungus, and Candida albicans. Uh, Malazia observed to be most sensitive to cinnamon oil, skin fungi, most sensitive to skin oil, while Candida albicans was most sensitive to thyme oil or Carvacrol. Okay, you had questions, I'm going to get to those. Please know, as I answer these, I'm not a doctor, you guys know that by now if you've been watching me for a period of time. But I can offer you a little hope. I can tell you what I might do if I had this problem, and I may know some of the answers. All I want you to do, folks, today is think about this huge picture. I knew coming into today's show, many of you would be sick um, this cold and flu season. Many of you would be sick because your diet led you there. And it's very difficult for any of us to say, come on, Doug, a piece of candy. To yeast, it's a bolus of candy. It can thrive with a peppermint, you know, a peppermint candy. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Sashvi, uh, what are your thoughts about taking chaga? Thank you. Chaga is a fungus that grows on trees. Um, I have friends who are doctors who really believe in it. And let me answer that this way. Any fungus, be it kombucha, uh, be it mushroom, a mushroom extract, lion mane, etc., chaga. Any time a fungus uh, gets you feeling much better, it is likely you're applying the laws, and again, uh, allopathic medicine would not buy this, the laws of homeopathy that dictate you treat like for like. If you have a fungal condition and you take chaga, and your doctor can't figure out why you're depressed, why you're having migraines, backaches, tummy problems, and you say, I'm going to go to the health food store, and a person at the health food store, well-intentioned people, good people, uh, tell you, hey, try chaga. I had another guy in here and it worked. And it works for you. Know that the etiology, the cause, when you, when you take fungus to treat fungus, it sometimes works. This is why I think we have taken off with mushroom sales uh, in the world. This is why I think many clinics, remember these two Japanese doctors that spoke to me through an interpreter? They have uh, fungus specialists that work with their patients in uh, cancer care to help them figure out which fungus is best for them, just like we might in pharmacology. What drug is best for you? They had uh, pharmacists who knew fungi. And I got to tell you, I don't know the stats. I don't think any oncologist is real proud of our pancreatic cancer results, our brain cancer results. Um, it, how good are we at curing cancer? Are the Japanese better at it? I think their stats may be better. I don't know, but I was led to believe that. Um, and why? They're using mushrooms very often yeast or mushrooms, uh, to help their patients. If your cancer has a fungal etiology, if your doctor says cancer can't be fungus, seriously think about it. It's well documented in hundreds of papers that uh, Aspergillus uh, flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus, two species of many species of Aspergillus, are not only pathogenic, but they're carcinogenic. They cause cancer. They emit a poison called aflatoxin. Many strains of that, one is G1 and one is B1. We now know aflatoxin B1 induces human hepatocellular cancer. Your doctor cannot refute that because his own studies have reported it. So if you have an oncologist that doesn't believe fungus and cancer go hand in hand, you know, talk to him. Don't leave him. Talk to him. Educate him. So if you get, if, my point is, Satsby, if you take chaga, you've never taken it before, and Doug says stay away from fungus. Well, I'm Y-U-R, V-U, John, Y-U-R, V-U, or your V-I-E-W. Yeah, view, your view, and I had never heard of your view, but it's picked up widely across America. Uh, we are also on uh, Dish and Direct, in the Los Angeles area on CTN, uh, Christian Television Network. I'm on, yeah, I think at 8.30 in the morning, and then again at 6.30 in the evening or something. CTN. Uh, we're on twice a day out in Los Angeles and every other. Uh, 
Do you have a channel on that, John? Your view? Okay, and we're on at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, Sandra, I'm sorry, but uh, we had been on KDOC for many, many years, and KDOC has converted their broadcasting to news. Everybody, WGN, everybody, there must be huge money in news. Uh, so primary programming has dropped back as these big uh, networks, KDOC is a great station, WGN is a great network, as they add news, 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 news. We were back to 5.30 in the morning or something, and, that, and it's expensive. I'm not um, a, a philanthropic, I am a philanthropic person, I'm not a, a 501c3. I'm not uh, a ministry, so I have to pay for my way. Many of you don't know that. I pay a ton of money to these networks to be on. Okay, um, Can't wait till seed of their like kind is available in grocery stores. Again, Cindy, what's right prevails, and ultimately what's wrong fails. It may take centuries. I was shocked, and I had read, you know, I've grown up Catholic. Uh, I had read the Bible, and... I read through Leviticus several times, and when I began seeing with seed of like kind, I began studying genetically modified organisms. What are these farmers doing? Why are they doing it? Why is the FDA wanting? And of course, folks, the headline was, we care about humanity. Oh, we, want, we think the U.S. can feed the world and there are char starving children in Biafra. And by genetically modifying, and none of us said a word. And boy, the race was on. The race was on, right? Pretend, pretend, pretend. Um, I don't know if any of our food is making it to Biafra. If it is, I sure hope it's not genetically modified. Here's the cool thing. Today, we have certain inalienable rights in America. We can choose not to eat GMOs. My second shock, once I realized that we were altering seeds, we are mixing seeds, fusion, genetic fusion it's called, uh, my second shock was when our FDA says, no, you don't have to label. You don't have to label those tomatoes, which are mostly GMOs. You don't have to label soybean, which is GMO. You don't have to label it. If you're so proud of it, if genetic modified organisms are so great, you'd be proud to put a GMO label on it and they'd fly off the shelf, right? Apparently, nobody was buying them. So you just take the label off and that's the way it's worked. That kind of thing going on in the food industry has always bothered me. But the cool thing is, we can shop for organic fruits and vegetables in a, a small hometown health food store or some of these bigger grocery stores. I used to be very loyal to one huge grocery store, not so much anymore. Um, yes, sir. Did you have a question, John? Yeah, <laughs> Man, how long have you been here? 18 now. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. 18 years. Wow. Enjoy having you aboard. Yeah, so mastic gum. This is a Mediterranean tree, and it's supposed to have tremendous uh, uh, benefits uh, a mouth, mucous membrane health, gut health, uh, respiratory system health, and so forth. It's called mastic gum. Uh, I don't know anything about it, but here's what I want you to do, Pat, um, and, and Happy New Year's to you too. I want you to type in mastic gum, antifungal, boom, hit the button and see. I think the reason, I just need to be clear here, I think the reason most phytonutrients, I only had to type in 12 of them, every one inhibited or killed lung, prostate, breast, and colorectal cancer. Oh, by the by, every one of them had antifungal properties. You think that's coincidental? It didn't take me 200 phytonutrients or phytoenzymes? The first 12 I chose. I think we're going to find that the reason I love resveratrol, the reason I love cilantro, the reason I love all of these plants and chlorophyll is because they inhibit fungal growth. I really do. I think I found a common use for so many of these wonderful, magnificent capsaicin, luteol, and D-limonene from lemon oils, uh, genistein, silmarin, curcumin, proanthocyanidine. They all kill fungus. Oh, by the by, another group studying them finds they inhibit cancer growth. 
those two never, ever have lunch together. You never put the guys who found Silmarin, um, it kills cancer cells, together with a guy who says, hey, it's antifungal. If these 24 guys, if these 12 phytonutrients, these 12 guys discovered they have antifungal properties, these 12 discovered they killed cancer, can you imagine? I'd pay. Put those 24 guys together, sit in the room with a tape recorder on your pocket, it would blow your mind. Huh, it must be coincidental that they just happen to kill lung cancer cells uh, and they have antifungal. Yeah, and what does lung cancer have to do with fungus anyway? You see where my brain goes. Bill Kendall, another year to recover your health. Long live KTC. Thank you, Bill. God bless you. Great statement. Uh, you know, again, John and I and Damon, you know, we all end up questioning this. How long are we going to be here? Um, I don't think any of us have interest. Who thought a guy this old would thoroughly enjoy, I got to tell you, even my own attorney contacted me over the holiday and was having health problems. Not, I told 17 people, some of you maybe, who had my uh, phone number and texted me. Every one of them I said, it is not coincidental that you're having these problems now totally likely linked to your diet. And every one of them, that's not true, almost every one of them said, uh, you're right, I have been eating garbage. I don't feel good. Can that not feel good uh, grow a lump in your body? You bet it can. Can it cause inflammation in the tummy and a lot of gas and bleeding? You bet it can. Why? It feeds fungus. Yeah, Scott, a doctor on YouTube uh, advocated topical iodine is best uh, for toenail fungus and skin tags. Do you concur? Is there then a fungus linked to skin tags? I ingest iodine to counter uh, much past imaging, uh, uh, imagining. Yeah. Um, iodine's really good. Uh, it's one of the older therapeutics against microbes uh, in your body. I don't know about skin tags, but... Um, I know it works for nail fungus. The difference is it's going to take much longer than Lamisil, Terbenafin, Spornox, which are drugs prescribed for that. But there are slight possibilities, I never saw it, that hepatotoxicity, liver toxicity can ensue when you take some of these antifungal drugs. So I like iodine. If it works, it works. Bill Kendall, Roby Mitchell was big on black seed oil. Tomorrow I want to read you a quote that ironically was on Facebook today, 2018 quote from my dear friend, Roby Mitchell. Roby was a cardiac pharmacologist, PhD, and an MD. One of the brightest people I've ever had the blessing of knowing in my life. There he is. And uh, he died of prostate cancer. Um, just uh, last year, I believe, and it just broke all of our hearts. But he was big on black seed oil. He really was. At this table, Roby and I had many conversations. Wife is taken for several issues and noticing positive results. What is your take on black seed oil? You can imagine Roby and all of us at lunch together. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't say okra without him saying, oh yeah, okra inhibits fungal growth, the seeds. And he was so bright. Once, you know what Roby was doing? He was one of the officers with a multi-level, before there was natural solutions or whatever that, uh, you know, the, the greens and the fruits and so forth, uh, that's doing billions of dollars worth of advertising. They're doing quite well, good for them. Dr. Howard, there was a company that Roby was involved in. He was on my radio show maybe 25 years ago, 23 years ago. And he asked what I did, and I talked to him about fungus. He never stopped believing I was right. So black seed oil is huge antifungal, and likely why it's helping your wife. Folks, you can see, as you read these articles, here's indole 3 carbonyl inhibiting breast cancer cells, and you get all excited, and you ask, why? Where do I find indole 3 carbonyls? Put it in. What foods have indole 3 carbonyls? 
And then why is it working? Why is it working? Nutritionists don't know. They didn't study the mycotoxicology. So yeah, anything Roby Mitchell liked, I liked also, because I liked him. So many of my friends got COVID, Sheila says. Try to tell them we have to build the immune system. Yeah, humans come in all shapes and sizes and beliefs and so forth. Um, here's the thing I'm, I'm struck with, folks. Um, in 2018, was this not cold and flu season? And weren't there millions of people globally with colds and flu? And didn't over half a million die? Usually the older and those with secondary problems going on in their health. We call that comorbidities. So the older people with cancer, the older people with atherosclerosis or coronary artery disease were the ones that ultimately died. They got the flu shot. Well, they still got the flu. I'm so lost. It's like I wake up every day in a totally different environment. We need to come to our senses, okay? Uh, yeah, I know, I, I've had uh, some of my really close friends. The shocker is, folks, so many wonderful, uh, you wouldn't know this person, but uh, I met him when I got back from Vietnam. He was just graduating from USC. I worked at USC, met him. Uh, we went, <laughs> oh, John, I could tell you the stories, me and Marty. We went out on, for Oktoberfest, after we met, I met him somewhere in Southern California, and they give you yards of ale. Do you remember those, John? A yard of ale is a glass mug with beer in it, and uh, it, it fills a yard, and we drank it, and we went crazy and did stupid things. And Marty is now one of my closest friends in the world. He's had two or three vaccines, and he, he had COVID. Uh, and just trying to explain that to people, folks. Um, I saw today on Facebook, you give somebody three smallpox shots, and then they get smallpox, they're going to have a question. I think that's a good question. And I think at some time we need to delve a little bit more into that. Look, I'm not here to tell you don't get vaccinated. I'm here to give you my thoughts, nobody else's, on immunizations, what they should do. The word implies you'll be immune to inhaling or getting that germ in your body if you've been desensitized to it, if you have blocking antibodies. We'll go into that more tomorrow. Um, what is the best defense against coronavirus? Jim, candidly, I'm taking beta-glucan. I hope you all are. Jim, you'll get some free. A packet like that will come in the mail. I take one a day, 10 milligram beta-glucan. This is my insurance for the past couple of years. Um, and, you know, knock on Formica, I had COVID in November of 2019. I had no idea what COVID was. I thought it was a flu, so I got better. Took a lot of supplements, got better. Um, I probably, should we have been hospitalized back then? I didn't get that sick, though. I didn't either. I wasn't. I remember talking to you, so, you know, I'd hop in a hot bath, and I'd eat a bowl of soup and take a ton of beta-glucan. Grapefruit seed extract. Grapefruit seed extract. Yeah, grapefruit seed extract. Olive leaf we were taking, all sorts of things. And we just got over it a few days later. Um, so, yeah, what's the best defense? <clears throat> As one who has studied immunity and the immune system for many, many years, look, nobody wants to sit at home by themselves and, uh, and yet most of us are. We're very concerned about this. Um, I don't know about permeability, aerosol permeability of mask, cloth versus the 95s. I don't know about the vaccine. I think we're learning. Uh, those who have waited are taking the C, told you so. And guys, we, we got to live as one. We can't, we can't rub our noses at those who have taken the vaccine. They took it because they were scared and they trusted their doctor. Um, and many of them, I think, are immune. You know, or what the, what the story is now is if you get sick and end up in a hospital, and tens of thousands of them are who have been vaccinated, um, that you won't get as sick. I haven't seen any stats on that. But the stories for two years that we've gotten are 
I'm not in sync with what I believe science is. We'll discuss that a little bit more tomorrow. Jim, I hope that helps. Beta-glucan is what I, mm. And let me sidebar here. Uh, Frank, the owner of NSC, uh, pays me fees to air segments of shows where I host the interview on my television show. So really look into this yourself. If you don't believe, if you think I'm saying this because, you know, Frank Jordan is a friend of mine, I, I very easily could, uh, but I don't. Nobody pays me a fee to talk here. But the studies I have read, lots of them since the 1950s on beta-glucan, it does assist the immune system, no doubt. Maria says, Doug, I was forced to take the first shot. I am in tears. Now, may I have your best protocol as I will move on to the second shot in a month? They would not let me file exemption. That's okay, Maria. Can I just tell you, I need to tell all of you. I spent a year in Vietnam, and sometimes you got emotional when someone was mortally wounded. God is in control. Not the CDC, not Dr. Fauci. God is in control. I really believe if you talk to the man upstairs, take your vaccine, he knows your heart, okay? He knows your immune system. Um, you don't need to be in tears. I cannot believe that there are that many nurses and doctors, thousands of them who haven't gotten this. Don't let this show become your decision. You've got to make a decision on your own. Don't be in tears anymore, because you know what? You've got a pretty big God on your side. Another vaccine, you'll get through it. We don't know what the future holds. I understand. I was reading, or no, it was a friend of mine, a, a doctor friend, who told me that uh, 5G is being flipped on tomorrow. Have you read that, John? Okay, yeah, it's uh, being flipped on tomorrow. And uh, we'll wait and see. Tomorrow's show, uh, we'll wait and see how we do. But uh, please, Maria, uh, that you would emote that much. Did you emote that much when you took the mumps, measles, and rubella vaccine? Nah. This is so political. It's so political, I can't believe it. Um, don't worry about it. You got it? I would begin taking natokinase, an enzyme in the morning uh, and another enzyme, bromelain, a pineapple enzyme in the evening. Enzymes tend to gobble up uh, uh, artifacts, cancer cells, stuff in our body that the body sees as foreign. So natto, N-A-T-T-O, kinase, K-I-N-A-S-E. Natto kinase in the AM, uh, bromelain, 500 milligram. Uh, Maria, always shoot your doctor a text or call them, talk to the nurse in their office and say, can I take natokinase and bromelain every day? These are digest, these are, these are important enzymes for your body. If you're wondering if there's anything foreign in it, we all, guys, we all have mercury, right? We've all had vaccines when we were kids. We all took antibiotics, lots of them foreign stuff in our body. And here we are, alive and well. Do not let fear get the best of you, Maria, because your God is a big God. Mm. Skin issues on my hand and do suffer from candida. Any suggestions? So um, I still love, I should bring a bottle. I have it over where I work out, but I should bring a bottle here of Time Out, uh, Thymol, uh, Time Oil. Um, one of the most potent anti-candidas. There's one called atopic dermatitis, eczema. Atopic dermatitis and eczema. I would not believe such a risk uh, uh, exists for penicillin, an antibiotic given to billions of us. However, it is by definition a mycotoxin, and mycotoxins cause cancer. Doctors Bernstein and Ross in 1992, in their study of prior medication use in a health history as risk factors for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, found that greater than or equal to Two months of treatment with penicillin or other antibiotics were associated with a significant increase in this type of lymphoma. Mycotoxins like alcohol, like those that grow on peanut, like those that grow on wheat and corn, and like antibiotics are mycotoxins, I believe 
really increase your risk of lymphoma. How do you get rid of them? We talked about that a lot today. Just natural things. You can begin, if we would shift away from what happened to us when I was in high school, fast foods, if we would just shift away, but John's right, it's cocaine, it's heroin. Try to get off that, folks. Um, if we would shift away and begin buying spinach and kale and cabbage and grinding up 12 carrots into a drink with a green apple in it for some sweetness. I mean, there's so, so many good things you could do with your diet. This time of year, television is filled with nothing but weight loss, weight loss. Hey, I'm a football player and I lost 28 pounds. No, I've got... When you give somebody, do you ever see folks the bowls? Hey, I eat this food every day and you know, it's, I eat a bowl of this food every day. Obviously portion control is important, but eating the right foods, mycotoxin free foods, I think is much, much more important. Oh, wow. I have a dear friend that's like my second dad. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer, has metastasized completely in one leg, half of the other, and his abdomen. Any suggestions, please? Um, okay, sure. I've, this is on my website somewhere. Uh, I did a whole story on prostate disease and the antifungal, it's a European antifungal I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start tomorrow with that, and then we're going to talk a little bit, not detrimental, we're going to talk a little bit about decisions we have to make for super health in 2020. I'll open, seeing if I can find those notes and help you out with uh, your, your, like a father's uh, prostate cancer. God bless you folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Tell a friend to watch this tonight. Might help a lot of people. Thank you.